and a very good evening and a warm welcome. I'm Toby Eager. Here are tonight's headlines. Police in Biggleswade urge residents to be vigilant after a spate of robberies. Plans for Leighton Buzzard Retail Park get the go-ahead. A government scheme boosts job prospects for local entrepreneurs. And a 3D visualisation is released showing the new Bedfordshire-based centre parks. In sport, Bedford school pupil set for Winter Youth Olympic Festival. Recent FA Cup clash proves a success for local policing strategy and success for the Bedford ladies hockey team. And later in tonight's extended programme, TV Bedfordshire meets its first local community champion. Bedfordshire police are appealing for witnesses to come forward after two robberies took place in Biggleswade. The first happened at around 6.15pm on Friday evening 15th of February as a 15-year-old victim walked along an alleyway in Palace Street towards the train station. Six males were blocking his way and as he tried to pass, one of the group grabbed the victim and demanded he handed over his mobile phone. The victim broke free and ran towards the train station but was chased and tackled to the floor. Two of the group dragged the victim back into the alleyway where he was threatened with a knife. The offenders took the victim's mobile phone before a member of the public intervened and the offenders fled the scene. The two offenders are both described as white males in their late teens or early twenties. The first offender is between 5 feet 9 inches and 6 feet tall, of medium build with dark shaven hair and was wearing a light coloured hooded top. The second offender was around six feet tall of average build and wore a black hat and a light coloured hoodie. Just after midnight on Sunday February 17th a similar robbery took place in an alleyway which runs between Langford Road and Hitchin Street in the town centre. The 19 year old victim was talking on his mobile phone when a group of five males blocked his path. One of the group then punched the victim twice causing him to fall to the floor. Another offender kicked the victim to the head and body while two other offenders searched the victim taking his mobile phone, tobacco, small amount of cash and one of his shoes. Detective Constable Emma Dahl, who is investigating both robberies, is keen to hear from anyone who may have witnessed either attack or seen the offenders either before or afterwards. DC Dahl said, while we are keeping an open mind about whether these offences are related, given the manner in which they are committed and the numbers involved, it does seem likely that we could be dealing with the same group of offenders. If you have any information relating to this incident, contact DC Dial in confidence on 01234 275357, the non-emergency number 101, or text information to 07786 200011. It's now full steam ahead as preparations to build Leighton's first retail park get underway. Rejoicing development, Claymore, saw victory as a majority of councillors voted in favour of building on greenfield land. The development will provide 100 new jobs whilst providing substantial community benefits. With the intention to begin building as soon as possible, Claymores are now engaged in positive discussions with a number of retailers focused around the DIY market. Stephen Cole of the Claymore Group said they are pleased with the councillor's decision. The developers have consulted widely on this and have listened to the views of the local residents and representatives, although some are still unconvinced. The ability to offer real retail choice, which complements the town centre rather than competes with it, is Claymore's primary aim. The development will provide a number of community benefits, including the creation of up to 100 jobs, substantial contributions to the town centre, improved transport links and the potential for up to 15 small start-up business units. The scheme will also enhance the retail offering for Leighton Buzzard residents. Despite concerns amongst those against the development, including Leighton Linslade Town Councillor Mike Bishop, it has been agreed that a retail park will help keep people in Leighton for their shopping, rather than visiting nearby Milton Keynes and Aylesbury. Unemployment figures nationally are falling, but there are still a large number of local people out of work and claiming benefits. Let's take a look at the Office for National Statistics for most recent figures. Employment was 29.73 million, a rise of 154,000 compared with the previous three months, and 71.5% of people aged 16 to 64 were employed. Turning our attention to unemployment, 2.5 million people aged 16 and over were out of work but seeking and available to work, a fall of 14,000 on the previous three months, and 7.8% of the labour force aged 16 and over could not find a job. 
Looking at those not in the labour force, known as economically inactive, 8.98 million people aged between 16 and 64 were either not looking for work or not available to work, a fall of 94,000. In January 2013, 1.54 million people aged 18 and over were claiming job seekers allowance, which is a benefit related to looking for work, a fall of 12,500 on December 2012. One government scheme to tackle these statistics worth £112 million aims to help young people start their own business. The Startup Loans Initiative, chaired by former Dragon's Den investor James Kahn, has recently supported its 1,000th young entrepreneur and could similarly help business residents back into employment. The former Dragon has found enormous satisfaction in the fact that those supported so far are also creating employment. He predicts that if each of the business startup loans supports, creates two or three jobs, that will be 100,000 jobs created by this initiative alone. Business Minister Michael Fallon said startup loans is going from strength to strength. The UK has a proud history of innovation and enterprise, and this scheme is helping to unleash that entrepreneurial streak for the next generation. Applications have almost more than doubled in the last month from 3,000 to more than 8,300 in January. The current target of backing over 100 businesses a week to include funding and mentoring is well in hand. The programme is available to anyone between the age of 18 and 30 whose business is in England. A low-cost loan and a free first-class mentoring means anyone with a great idea and the passion to make it work can now start their business. Here's a short video explaining more. Startup Loans is, a, is an initiative backed by the government and this is designed really to help young people to start their business. And the government's role in this has got to be to try and do everything we can to encourage more startups and then to help them to grow, to help them get finance, to help them to take people on. It's an organisation that's identifying young talent, people who are passionate and driven about their idea of business. And as you can see, we've got lots of entrepreneurs here today who've started their ideas, and that's what Startup Loans is looking to do. Uh, my name is Lex Smith, and my company is called Nonsense. And my name is Elena Mingus. Business is Tangle Dress Design. My name is Christopher Davis, and my business is Nova Corker. Uh, my name is Andrew Cooper, and the name of the business is called Puffier. I'm Aaron Clark and my business is Get Real Magazine. I got two and a half thousand pounds. Three thousand pounds. Five thousand pounds. I've asked for six thousand pounds. It's not just about the amount I'm getting, it's about the support, the mentoring system that they've got. That's going to be the main thing for me. He's already put me in touch with people, also making new business ideas. She's got loads of relevant experience and contacts setting me up with meetings with people. Pushing me forward and actually spurring me on. The experience of a qualified mentor is priceless basically. A start up loans for new entrepreneurs to start up a business and hopefully take people on is absolutely vital for the future of our country. We've already started in the first three months 460 businesses. We plan to be doing at least 100 new businesses a week and what we're doing really is not only starting businesses but we're creating jobs. Now, what I like about this scheme, it's very simple and it's for a startup loan. It does what it says on the tin. These young people are already starting to employ people, so just imagine if they just hired two or three people each, we could create between 50 to 100,000 jobs, which I think would be amazing. The new jobs, predominantly, will come from small and medium-sized and start-up businesses. If you've got a dream and you've got something that you believe in, take that step and actually go for it. Just go for it. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Construction of Centre Park's new £250 million village, Woburn Forest, is on schedule to open to guests in spring 2014. And to mark the fast approaching completion of the site, the company has released a 3D visualisation of how it will look. Centre Park's UK Chief Executive, Martin Dolby, said that although the development has been hit with snow, wind and rain over the last few months, the team has worked hard to ensure they remain on track to open to guests in spring 2014. Woburn Forest will be Centre Park's fifth UK village and will comprise 625 forest lodges, a 75-bedroom hotel and spa with six associated spa suites and two leisure buildings, including indoor sports facilities, subtropical swimming paradise, restaurants and retail outlets. 
It will also include an outdoor sports and leisure facility and a lake. Bookings for the new site will open this summer. And now the sport. Bedford School's Luke Riddell has been selected to compete in the Winter Youth Olympic Festival in Brasov, Romania later this month. Riddell will be racing in the slalom and combined slalom alpine events against the world's top juniors. Riddell is the youngest participant of the Federation of International Skiing Circuit. The 16-year-old GCSE student, who started to race seriously when he joined the Ambition Race Academy, aged 13, spent last summer training and racing in Chile until an injury in the downhill event curtailed his training. Regardless of this, Luke's inclusion at the Youth Olympic Festival will provide a valuable platform for gaining international experience for those still developing in the sport. Despite the disappointment for Luton Town at their exit from the FA Cup fifth round at home to Millwall recently, Bedfordshire Police have declared the policing operation a huge success. Seven people were arrested over the course of the day for public order offences as Hatters went out of the tournament 3-0. Officers from Bedfordshire Police, Hertfordshire and Cambridgeshire Constabularies, Metropolitan Police Service along with support from Thames Valley Police Mounted Section and British Transport Police were involved in the day's operation which stretched between London and Luton. It was an excellent partnership between Bedfordshire Police, the clubs, the other forces and agencies. It's a shame that a small minority behaved badly after the game but the vast majority of fans enjoyed the occasion despite the result on the field and went away without causing any problems. Pleased with the outcome of the operation, Bedfordshire Police and Crime Commissioner Ollie Martin said that the police got it right despite a few unpleasant people who didn't go to the match but were looking for trouble and nearly got their way. Steph Hollyoak chose the perfect time to score her first goal for Bedford Ladies Hockey's first team on Saturday 16th of Feb, striking in the final minute of the East Premier League clash to inflict a first defeat of the season on table leaders Holcombe. The result closes the gap between the Maroons and the leaders to eight points with four games remaining. What made the victory even more impressive was the fact that the win over a side boasting a South African Olympian in Shelley Russell and two other internationals was achieved without five key first team regulars. Bedford held the Kent side to a one-all draw maintaining a strong defence until the dying seconds when Kate Costin managed to pass two defenders in the area to find Hollyoke at the back post who then sealed the win giving Bedford the result of the season. The result and performance will give coach Graham Markham some interesting selection decisions for future games after impressive debuts for their second team players. An addition to our bulletin this week is our new feature, Local Community Champions. Last Wednesday, I went along to Dimensions Fitness in Luton to meet our first recipient of this prestigious award. So behind these doors here at Dimensions Fitness in Luton is our first community champion Kirkland Hay and his group of very special people who we are about to meet and who without Kirk would not be able to live life as independently as they do today. So we're off in to take a look. So the members have begun their session behind me. They're warming up at the moment in the studio with Kirk. And uh, I've just been informed that I'm going to be joining in with the session. So hopefully it won't be too much hard work for me, but we'll uh, see how it goes. Sorry about the noise. Okay, so that was the warm up, and uh, Kirk's now going to demonstrate to us how he's shown the patients how to be able to get up off the floor um, with the the difficulties that stroke patients have with loss of movement down one side of their body um, because there are times when they might fall over at home and need to be able to get up so this is the bit that's going to be difficult for me I know and I'm going to go and give it a go right now. There we go. Thank you. 
get rid of one side of your body. Yep. Good side. We'll let you keep your right side. Okay. You can't use the left side, get up. Okay. I can't do it. <laughs> That's really hard. Right. Roll over, roll over. Wait, 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 do this. You're going to roll, you've got to hit yourself. So your bad side is like this. Okay. All right. So if you come over onto this side, pull yourself over. Yeah. Right, then you push up onto that side now, don't you? No, okay. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, now don't get that legs in the knee up. Okay. And then use that to straighten yourself up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'll just let the Eddie around. Wait for this one, please. Other than the therapy side of things, why else do you come here? Well, uh, you meet nice people and the staff are lovely. Yeah. Because uh, in September I took ill and, you know, I felt dizzy in there to get the ambulance and they were really kind and caring, so it's a lovely place. Okay. Uh, so what has this session done for your independence since? Everything. Everything. Yes, it's given me more confidence. I can now go out and about, whereas before I was a bit reluctant to in case I fell or what, but it's really built me up. It's further along. Yeah. But Ivan, we did get to this stage, didn't we? Yeah. Where you could go on the floor like this, and be on the floor like this, yeah. and from here go to here. Yeah. And get up. Yeah. 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 Hi Kirk, it's great to meet the man behind these uh, great classes. Can you tell us a bit more about how you began them? Yes, Toby, I can. It's a, a bit of an accident. One of my uh, members, who's a, a physio at uh, Luton and Dunstable Hospital, came and asked me if we, if we could do anything for their, uh, their stroke uh, habilitation um, uh, classes. And uh, what seemed to happen was that, that they did six weeks uh, with the NHS and then they were let, let go into the street, effectively. And, uh, and she thought that they needed something a little bit more. We put a, a four-week trial together, and uh, four years later, we're still doing it. Kirk, so the, the members don't pay a lot of money for what seems to be life-changing therapy. So what do you get out of it? What does Dimensions benefit? Uh, it's a personal benefit, actually. But you're right, it isn't a lot of money, and it isn't about the money. It's about bringing these people into to mainstream fitness. And uh, for them to actually enjoy it, you know, they, they get a lot of enjoyment out of it. We get enjoyment out of having them here. And... Uh, is it life changing? Yeah, it is life changing. Fitness is life changing. Yeah. And fitness is for everybody. Excellent. And we just want to do that for them. So it was good. Fantastic. So Kirkland Hay, our first community champion. Yeah. And now the weather with Heidi. It's been another chilly start to the week and for most places across the county, temperatures will struggle to get above zero. For most of us, it will remain frost free, but we are in for a rather cloudy week with the addition of some northeasterly winds taking the edge of the temperature and making it feel closer to freezing. Maximum temperatures will struggle to get higher than around six degrees. And although still very cold, we are moving in the right direction with the possibility of sun on its way next week. The overnight temperatures will remain above zero with a blanket of cloud overhead. There may be a few spots of light rain and drizzle in some areas over the next couple of days, and then particularly on higher ground. But for most of us, it will stay dry. Once again, if you'd like to contact us, you can send an email to tvbedfordshire at gmail.com or you can text 07950 making sure you start the text with the word news, or you can find us on the social networking sites through our Facebook page or by following us on Twitter. Until next time, bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>